This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1249. Eating Mindfully, How to Devour a Super Burrito with No Regrets, part one, by Kylie Lassard of abluesky-mind.com. And I'm your narrator, Dr. Neil. Happy Monday and welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best blogs covering health and fitness, just like an audiobook. Now we have a bunch of shows where we do this. Just search for Optimal Living Daily to find all of them. Now, today's post is a bit longer than what I typically narrate. So, as usual, I'll read the first half today and then finish it up for you tomorrow. Now, today, we feature a new author for this show. I'll tell you all about Kylie right after the reading. But for now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Eating Mindfully, How to Devour a Super Burrito with No Regrets, Part 1 by Kylie Lassard of abluesky-mind.com. White flour used to scare me, like strike fear into my heart. The idea of blissfully ripping into a white flour tortilla wrap burrito with all the fixings would have given me hives because white flour was on my bad food list. Even whole wheat flour was on the list. I used to be so against starchy carbs, meaning all the carbs that fall outside of fruits and vegetables, that I made it the focus of a presentation in my college debate class. My contention was that starchy carbs have no place in a healthy diet and that they drive the world's obesity problem. I got a bad grade because there isn't enough evidence to support my claim. I think I was so convinced of their inherent evil because I struggled so much with them. They tempted me all the time in the form of pasta, crackers, bread, rice, cookies, cake, oatmeal, etc. The devil knew many forms with which he could easily get to my waistline. But none of this is shocking information to anyone. Carbs are incredible. They're so delicious that they actually cause a notable amount of serotonin, a good feeling hormone, to fire in the brain when consumed. The issue was not the delicious carbs, because Plenty of people both enjoy them and in moderation too. The issue was my demonization of the carbs and consequential extremism with them. I struggled with this love-hate relationship for years, most of high school and all of college, before realizing that my willpower was simply not working. As much as I thought starches would kill me by a slow death of chub, I still wanted them every single day. The solution finally materialized when I began eating mindfully. What is mindful eating? I've already written at length about what is mindful eating and how various folks define it, myself included. But it's an idea worth iterating again and again because it's one that's so easy to forget. Mindful eating is specifically putting away your phone so that you can focus on what's in front of you. It's taking 10 minutes to eat the lunch you just picked up at a table, not at your desk. It's admiring the colors of your meal, the smells and textures and various nutrients contained within the various parts and pieces. It's savoring each bite by indulging your senses in the experience. Unfortunately, I see so little of this in the modern work world. I have the pleasure of eating both breakfast and lunch at my office, so I see a lot of folks taking part in something that is definitely not mindful eating grabbing whatever looks tasty for their meal, rushing back to their desk to eat in between emails or while reading an article, barely noticing what they're eating and kind of forgetting it even happened once it's done. In a culture so obsessed with food, it's kind of strange how we barely pay attention to what we put in our mouths sometimes. Practical Strategies for Eating Mindfully I actively seek to rebel against desk-lunch culture. To me, Nothing is less mindful or experiential than shoveling food into your mouth while shoveling digital content into your brain. Remember, you can't be mindful of anything if your mind is occupied by something else like Instagram, the New York Times, your email, and so on. Here are some of the steps you can take to help make sure your consumption habits are as mindful as possible. Step one, eat with the right mentality. Ask yourself, Am I feeling physical cues of hunger? Or is it possible that I'm either bored or upset or even just thirsty? Sometimes you're not actually hungry. 
and you're in a social situation where you feel pressure to indulge in the eating around you. Simply taking note of that pressure can be powerful enough to curb your desire to indulge outside of actual hunger. But sometimes you'll use that awareness to make a conscious decision to indulge anyway and feel fine about that. Step two, ask what your body needs to feel nourished in this moment. Sometimes the body will be craving veggies, other times protein, and sometimes it will even crave a sweet something or other. All of these cravings tell a story. And since your body's inner voice doesn't get its own mouthpiece, it's important to pay close attention to these signals. It's important to note that cravings can be triggered by things like insufficient sleep, poor hydration, not enough fiber or protein, or contextual associations. If you feel yourself hankering for chocolate chip cookies or greasy potato chips, try to assess whether it might be a response to something else going on with your body, rather than a true desire for comfort food. Step three, hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Eating Mindfully, How to Devour a Super Burrito with No Regrets by Kylie Lassard of abluesky-mind.com. And thank you to HelloFresh. I used to think that eating better meant making fresh food from scratch every single meal, every single day until I figured out a way to eat healthy without spending hours in the kitchen. The answer was HelloFresh. Whether it's your New Year's resolution to eat better, cook more, or simply save money, HelloFresh is your one-box solution to all your New Year's resolutions. HelloFresh has one of the most diverse menus I've ever seen, ranging from low-calorie, vegetarian, pescatarian options, and more. I had heard so much about the home-style chicken and biscuit pot pie, but thought everyone was exaggerating about how good it was until I actually tried it, and it melted in my mouth. It was the ultimate comfort food. Now you can also receive affordable chef-created meals that require little prep time and saves you time on those busy weeknights. Go to hellofresh.com slash OHD10 and use code OHD10 for 10 free meals including free shipping. That's hellofresh.com slash OHD10 and use code OHD10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Now really quickly about today's author. Kylie is the founder of A Blue Sky Mind and the mission is to educate the world about positive psychology, what it is, why it's helpful, and how to practice it in a realistic and sustainable way. She has a lot of wonderful content. Come by abluskymind.com to check it out. And again, a big thank you to Kylie for letting us share her work. And now for my commentary. The second step Kylie presented was something I would often use when counseling patients that wanted to lose weight. I'll share with you just one example of this. I once had a patient that was enrolled in one of my weight management classes. And one day, he shared a realization he recently had about his own eating habits he realized that whenever he walked through his front door after work, he immediately went straight to his refrigerator. He didn't even think about it. It was just something he did on a subconscious level. He would come home, walk straight to the fridge, and grab something to eat. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, maybe he didn't eat all day. He's so hungry when he gets home, his body is naturally telling him to go find something to eat. Well, your thought process is sound, but he admitted that he wasn't actually hungry when he got home, but he would still go straight to the fridge anyway. So something we discussed was whether his eating was, just as today's author Kylie said in her post, contextual, meaning he associated coming home after work with automatically going to the fridge. He felt that this was indeed the case for him. So I advised him that one way to break this unconscious habit was to substitute a new behavior whenever he got home from work he needed to find a way to distract himself so that he wouldn't go to the fridge or pantry and yet something that brought him the same sense of satisfaction. So he said that because of his long commute home from work, he could come home and check his email instead of going to the fridge. Perfect, that'll work. By doing this, he is now making going to the fridge after coming home from work less automatic. And with this simple change, he probably saved himself hundreds of calories each day. 
All right, that'll do it for me for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening every day. And I'll be back here tomorrow to finish up this post. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.